Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to go through a trace of the insertion sort algorithm. If I had to summarize the insertion sort algorithm in one sentence, this would be it. Assume the first element is sorted, make room, and insert. Okay, so I've got nine cards here, okay, two all the way through ten of hearts, and I've kind of shuffled them into a random order. Let's pretend that you're playing a card game and you were just dealt these nine cards and you're going for a straight, okay? So you wanna sort your hand of cards that were dealt to you in this order to two through 10, right? So insertion sort is actually the algorithm that many people use in order to sort their hand of cards, right? So how this algorithm works is imagine you're holding these cards and let's say the seven is the furthest card on the left of your hand. You assume that seven is in its sorted position. Then you go through and you grab each card one at a time and you insert it relative to the seven. So you would grab the four and you'd say, okay, four goes on the left side of the seven. So you'd pick it up and you'd insert it on the left side of the seven. Then you'd grab the next card and you'd say, oh, okay, well, three is smaller than four and seven. So you would insert the three in the farthest spot on your hand. So that's kind of the high level overview of the insertion sort algorithm. I think it's best to trace through it and watch how each iteration builds the sorted portion of our array from the left side by one. So you can see down here in the bottom, I've got this green bracket denoting the sorted portion of the array and this red bracket denoting the unsorted portion of the array. So each iteration will be able to see the sorted portion grow by one card and the unsorted portion shrink by one card. Once our sorted portion is the entire array and there is no unsorted portion, no more cards to insert in the sorted part of our hand, then we finished insert and sort and our hand of cards or our array of cards or a list of cards, whatever we wanna call it, is sorted. All right, so let's go through and trace insert and sort. So we assume the first element is sorted. So this is our first element, seven, by definition, a single card is sorted, right? All right, so now we're gonna go through and we're gonna start with the first element of our unsorted portion of the array, and we're going to insert it in its proper position in the sorted portion of the array to grow the sorted portion by one. All right, so four is our first element in the unsorted portion. So four is the element we're trying to insert. So we ask, is four smaller than seven? Yes, it is. So I've got to make room to insert the four by sliding the seven over and making room for the four. We're now at the beginning of the array, so there's no other cards to check. So we insert the four in its sorted position. This shrinks the unsorted portion of the array by one, and this grows the sorted portion of the array by one. That was the first iteration of insertion sort. Now we do another iteration of insertion sort, once again, starting with the first element in our unsorted portion of the array, which is three. So I'll pull three out a little bit. We're trying to walk through and find out where to insert three in this sorted portion of our hand. All right, so we ask, is three smaller than seven? Yes, it is. So we've got to move the seven over to make room for the three. Is three smaller than four? Yes, it is. So we've got to move the four over to make room for the three. We're now at the beginning of our array or at the beginning of our hand. There's no more cards to check. So the three must go here. So this shrinks our unsorted portion of the array by one and grows our sorted portion of the array by one. The next iteration of insertion sort, we always start with the first element in our unsorted portion, 10. We ask, is 10 smaller than seven? It is not, so we don't need to move the seven over in order to make room for the 10, and we insert the 10 in its sorted position, which shrinks the unsorted portion by one and grows the sorted portion by one. Next iteration, we start with the first element in our unsorted portion, which is eight. We ask, is eight smaller than 10? It is. We've gotta move the 10 over to make room for the eight, is eight smaller than seven? No, so this is where we insert eight to shrink our unsorted portion by one and grow our sorted portion by one. 
All right, moving right along. Six is the first element in our unsorted portion of the array. We ask, is six smaller than 10? Yes. So we've got to slide the 10 over to make room for the six. Is six smaller than eight? Yes. So we've got to slide the eight over to make room for the six. Is six smaller than seven? Yes. So we've got to slide the seven over to make room for the six. Is six smaller than four? No, it is not. So this is where we insert our six. All right, we've just shrunk our unsorted portion of the array by one, and we just grew our sorted portion of the array by one. Only a few more iterations left. We've got three more cards to insert. All right, nine is the first element in our unsorted portion. Is nine smaller than 10? Yes, so we've got to slide the 10 over to make room for the nine. Is nine smaller than eight? No, it's not. So we insert nine between the eight and the 10. Our unsorted portion just shrunk by one and our sorted portion just grew by one. All right, the two. We're gonna have to do a lot of copying and shifting in order to make room for this two, right? It's gotta go all the way over here. All right, is two smaller than 10? Yes. Move the 10 over to make room for the two. Two smaller than nine? Yes. Two smaller than eight? Yes. Two smaller than seven? Yes. Two smaller than six? Yes. Two smaller than four. Yes. Two smaller than three. Yes. We're at the beginning of the array. There's no more cards to insert. So we know the two must go here. Shrink our unsorted by one and grow our sorted by one. All right. Five is our last card to insert in the sorted portion of our hand of cards. Is five smaller than 10? Yes. Make room. Five smaller than nine. Yes, make room. Five smaller than eight. Yes, make room. Five smaller than seven. Yes, make room. Five smaller than six. Yes, make room. Five smaller than four. Nope. So we insert between the four and the six. Our unsorted portion of the array just shrunk by one and our sorted portion just grew by one. And we're at the end of the array, which means our entire array, our entire hand of cards is now sorted. So when you think about that insertion sort, think about actually holding these nine cards in your hand, right? Assume the first element sorted, grab the next one and insert it, right? You're picking it up and you're inserting it. When it comes to implementing this algorithm with say an array or a list, right? You've actually got to copy values over to the right in order to make room for them, right? So that's why we were doing that kind of sliding motion uh, whereas when we're holding the cards in our hand, we don't really need to slide them over. We just insert in between. So think about how you might implement this algorithm as you're tracing through it. Lastly, I like to do these traces with playing cards because everyone has playing cards sitting around or can easily access a deck of playing cards. So to practice your sorting routines, I highly recommend grab one suit of a deck of playing cards, like all the hearts. Uh, you can just do two through 10 like I did, or you can do ace through king. Shuffle them, lay them out in front of you, and apply your sorting routines to practice tracing through them. If you understand how to trace through them, then think about what are your indexes that you would use for your loop control, what are your variables you would need to keep track of any data assignments, etc., and then you can derive the code. So understand the sorting algorithms by tracing them, and then you can derive the code. All right, that's it for my insertion sort video. Thank you for watching.